And here is the writer's almanac for Friday, March the 22nd, 2019. It's the birthday of Billy Collins, born in Queens, New York, 1941. He was in his 40s when he published his first book, The Apple That Astonished Paris. He's become one of the country's most popular poets. His book, Sailing Alone Around the Room, has sold almost 200,000 copies, more than any other book of poetry in this century. Billy Collins, who said the romantics killed off humor in poetry, and they also eliminated sex, things which were replaced by landscape. I thought that was a pretty bad trade-off, so I'm trying to write about humor and landscape and occasionally sex. It's the birthday of the novelist who wrote, I just pointed my rifle at him and let him have the big one right through the third button on his shirt. If he ever figured to sew that particular button on again, he was going to have to scrape it off his backbone. The Western novelist Louis L'Amour, born in Jamestown, North Dakota, 1908. And that was a quote from Ride the Dark Trail. It's the birthday of the translator Edith Grossman, born in Philadelphia, 1936, who has translated the works of Mario Vargas Llosa and the Spanish writer Julian Rios and every one of Gabriel Garcia Marquez's books since Love in the Time of Cholera in the late 80s. Studied Spanish in high school, college, grad school, became a professor of Spanish literature, liked to teach Latin American fiction, such as the writing of Marquez. She started translating stories, then a few novels, and then worked on Marquez's Love in the Time of Cholera. She knew that he liked William Faulkner, so she used Faulkner's style as a guide. She said, I didn't use any contractions. I used Latinate words, polysyllabic words, instead of German monosyllables. Anytime I could, I chose a longer word rather than a shorter word, as if Hemingway had never lived. The book was a hit. She quit teaching, began translating full-time. An editor contacted her about translating Don Quixote. She said she was terrified at the thought, had bad dreams about it at night. She had always translated living writers. And then a writer whom she had translated, Julian Rios, told her, don't be afraid, translate Cervantes the way you translate everybody else because he's the most modern writer we have. She said she realized that Don Quixote is not a puzzle for academics, not a repository of Renaissance usage or a historical monument or a text for the classroom. It is a work of literature. And so she went to work on it. Here's a poem by Billy Collins to my patron. I do not require a ton of pink marble, a hundred tubes of paint, or an enormous skylit loft. All I need is a pen, a little blank notebook, and a lamp with a 75-watt bulb. Of course, an oak desk would be nice, maybe a chair of ergonomic design, and a collie lying on an oval rug, always ready to follow me anywhere or just sniff my empty palm. And I would not turn down a house, canopied by shade trees, a swing suspended from a high limb, flowering azaleas around the porch, pink, red, and white. I might as well add to the list a constant supply of pills, that would allow me to stay awake all night without blinking, a cellar full of dusty bottles of Bordeaux, a small radio, nothing, I assure you, would go unappreciated. Now, if you wouldn't mind leaving me alone, and please close the door behind you so there won't be such a draft on my shoulders, I will get back to work on my long metrical poem the one I will recite to the cheering throng prior to your impending beheading. To my patron, a poem by Billy Collins from his collection Nine Horses, published by Random House and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, 
and keep in touch.